This is Western Fashion Behind the Scenes, hosted by the Boot Babes. In this podcast, we delve deep into the world of Western fashion, exploring its history, trends, and the people who make it happen. With Cowgirls once again taking the spotlight, we bring you stories from the industry's most fascinating characters. Saddle up and join us as we ride into the wild west of fashion. And now here's your host. Hey, it's Ashley the Boot Babe, and we are live on Western Fashion Behind the Scenes with Farini today. Farini is a boot brand, and if you know, we are doing a series on the boot brands, how they fit, how to get to know them, and where you can buy them. Today, we have Mark Claver on this episode. He is the sales manager for Farini, and he's been here for at least 10 years, but he took a few years off, and now he's back again, and he's gonna tell us how they changed their last. I'm excited, welcome, Mark. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. We're old friends. We are old friends. I've known you for a while. It's fun to do this podcast because not only have I got to catch up with old friends, but I've gotten to see that they've created new things. Yeah, I think it's a great thing that you're doing. You really kind of expand the knowledge, everyone in the world about the boot business. And it's, it's exciting. Great. It is exciting. I, you and know, you make it fun. Aw, you're sweet. You know what's really interesting? So think of the Marlboro Man. What does he represent? I know it's not so great, but cigarettes, right? Right. Who do you think of when you think of boots? I personally think because of my background, I think of the, the rodeo cow. Wait, okay, but give me someone's name. Nobody, huh? Yeah. Isn't it weird? I really don't think of anyone. Isn't it interesting? This is good. Uh, This is important for people to hear and for other brands to hear. How interesting is it that there's no icon in this industry? And I'm determined to be that. The Boot Babe is a human being who loves Western fashion and education and educating people about Western traditions. I grew up on a horse ranch in the middle of nowhere. I'm so deeply committed to seeing those traditions continue that I decided that I needed to become an icon. So you hit the nail on the head. There is no one representing the boot industry very well as the boot figure of knowledge. And you're the perfect person to do that. Well, thanks, Mark. I'm grateful. So I know that Farini, when I used to wear it, it used to fit a little tight. So I'd have to sometimes put a bag on, which was no big deal. I taught a lot of people how to wear a Farini. Lots of people have worn Farini over the years. You warehouse around 50,000 boots. You're not a little company. You've been going for a while, but recently you changed the way the boots fit. Let's talk a little bit about that. Right. We felt that we had a nice silhouette of our boot with our styles and everything. But like you say, people struggled a little bit to get it on. Once it was on, it was a great fit. So we thought we should do something about that because we didn't want anyone to turn away from a Farini because of the initial experience of trying to get it on. So we changed the last a little bit, made it more, I'm going to call it American friendly. And from that point forward, we've had zero feedback of it being too tight. Yeah. And it does fit a little big now. So you sent me a nine and a half. I usually wear a nine and a half in most things. I have an insole in these and it's still almost a little big, so I could probably wear a nine if not an eight and a half. I'd want to try them on. So if you're listening to this, make sure you go and try one on and I'll let you know where you can get these boots. You've been selling boots for how long? About 15 years with Farini. I started at one point taking the boots and had to events and selling them. Ropings, barrel races, and larger events. Took them to Vegas one year. And from there, Vino and I became acquainted and developed a relationship so he brought me on as national sales manager and says, hey, go build a sales team. Let's spread the word on Farini because it was a bit limited all around the country of where everyone knew about it. So we brought in 18 sales reps, put it coast to coast, border to border, and kind of built the brand. Yeah, I love this. And then now where are you at? How many boots do you warehouse? We warehouse right at any given time about 50,000 pair. And Farini started by making Italian shoes. Right. Or tell me a little bit about that. Well, we were in the exotic skin and leather business. And from there, he built or, or had Italian-made dress shoes for men. No women's, uh, just a men's alligator, exotic, ostrich, and was in that business along with the belt business, exotic belt business. And then in the mid-90s, he progressed on into the boot business. Hmm. We still have a line of men's shoes, but our primary focus, 98% of it is on boots. So 30 years of boots. Yes. vino has been selling skins to most of the people. He used to sell to Lucchese. Right. He sold to Lucchese, Tony Lama. And actually in the mid-90s when NAFTA started, it gave everyone the ability to go buy cheap skins in Mexico. At that point, he leaped off into his own boot business. Amazing. So now, fast forward to right now, you guys have broken the, into the fashion world, I see. Yes. Yes. We, we've really focused this year and the last number of years, but particularly this year, on much more fashion, a boutique kind of approach to a lot of it. You know, a lot more shine and glitter. 
Okay, well, I'm excited to see the line. What do you think people should understand about Farini? I know they used to think that they were more of a dress shoe, but you say they're, you can wear them in the barn. Yes, I think one of the things that the misnomer is, do they have the durability to be a rodeo boot or a ranch boot or a farmer boot? And they do. You can still have this exotic print look where the rubber sole can go do whatever you want and still look like a million dollars. And talk to me about what sets you apart from the other brands. I think the fact that we have our own leathers and exotics, so when we shop those directly from the farmer and hunter, we're able to control our quality. Yeah, way different quality than most people's. Rather as opposed to just what leathers are available on the market at a given time. We get to pick and choose in warehouse. Do you think that it's hard for people to understand cowboy boots? I think it is because when you think cowboy boots, who immediately comes to your mind? Is there anyone specific? It has to be someone personal in your life because there really isn't a, a an icon, so to speak, out there that is, oh, there's the boot girl or there's the boot guy. Yeah, now yeah. we got the boot babe. <laughs> right, the boot babe, it's a real thing. It's definitely needed. I am curious who changed your life and how did you wear cowboy boots as a kid? You grew up on a ranch? I grew up on a ranch. My dad raced horses. We rodeoed a lot, so I've worn yeah. them from the very beginning. Yeah. It's just been a part of my life and I've just continued to progress. So it was an easy fit for me when I went to work for Farini because I grew up with boots, I understood boots for all its purposes. Fino taught me the leather and exotic skin business and more about the boots and turned me into what I think is a knowledgeable boot person. I love that. So if you're a store and you're listening to this and you want to buy some cowboy boots, do you guys wholesale? Yes. And you retail? Yes. Okay. So we can find you wholesale at the Dallas market? Yes, absolutely. And someone can get a hold of you. I'll give them that information if they need it. And then retail online, farinausa.com. Yes. Okay. Thanks for being on today, Mark. Absolutely. Loved it. This is Western Fashion Behind the Scenes, and this is Ashley giving you a tour of the boot brands. Today, we heard from Farini and Mark Claver, the national sales manager. Thanks for being here. If you're listening and you loved this, go like and share this with your friends. And remember, it's always a good time to wear cowboy boots. Thank you for listening to Western Fashion Behind the Scenes, hosted by the Boot Babes. If you want to stay up to date with the latest in Western fashion, make sure to subscribe to our show and follow us on social media. We'd love to hear your feedback and suggestions for future episodes, so feel free to reach out. Until next time, keep rocking those cowboy boots.